Hello. If anyone watching this has a birthday this week, may I wish you very many happy returns. Now, this coming Sunday, we celebrate the church's birthday. Uh, not just Christ Church, Morton, but the birthday of every Christian church in every land. That's around 200 million people. Now, one of the really fun things I remember about having a birthday when I was a child was the opportunity for a party. And one of my all-time favourite party games was Pass the Parcel. And the best parcels always had something inside every layer with a bigger surprise in the middle. Well, at Pentecost, we also celebrate a gift that is multi-layered and which just keeps on giving. When we talk about the church, we're not talking about the beautiful building that we meet in each week, but about the people within. People who come to worship God at Christ Church and places like it all around the world. At Pentecost, God gave the church a very special gift, the Holy Spirit, a very special part of God himself living inside us and helping us to be the people he wants us to be. And as we unwrap the gift that is the Holy Spirit, we remember the words that Jesus spoke to the disciples at the end of Matthew's gospel as he commissioned them for the new work that they were about to begin. He said, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Just as Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, so the Holy Spirit is the sign and seal of God with us to the very end of the age. Let me read to you some verses from Acts chapter 2 that speak about the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost. Verse 1, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were seated. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem at that time, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. A little later in chapter 2, beginning at verse 14, we read, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below and blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And Jesus' friends and followers had been through some very frightening times. They had seen Jesus die a violent death on the cross. And then they had seen him come alive again. Many of them had spoken to him and seen him since the resurrection. The friends who knew him best had even eaten with him before Jesus gave them that great commission to tell the whole world about him. Now they loved and trusted the Lord, but they felt inadequate to the task as well they might. 
They were frightened and uncertain about what it all meant. And so we heard they were still gathered together in one place, probably the same place they had shared that last supper. Now, I don't really blame them. It's a pretty tall order for anyone to deal with all that had happened. They loved Jesus. They wanted to do whatever he asked of them, but they felt they were just not ready, not strong enough, not wise enough, not yet prepared to share with others all that they had seen Jesus say and do over the previous three years. And Jesus knew this. And that's why he had told them that God would send another advocate, the Holy Spirit, to help them and be with them forever. He would teach them all things and remind them of everything they had learned from Jesus. As we keep unwrapping the gift, we discover that the Holy Spirit is not simply a source of comfort and advice, but God's power within us. Being friends with God changes us. Now in our reading, we were told that there was a sound like a violent wind, wind and, and tongues of fire that seemed to settle on everyone in the room. Now, if you've ever seen Disney's Beauty and the Beast, you'll remember that one scene that always springs to my mind when I read this passage. It's near the end of the movie when Belle thinks that she had lost the beast that she now has come to love because he's lying all crumpled on the floor after defeating the villain of the piece, Gaston. And then suddenly there's a rush of wind and sparkling lights and the beast is lifted up and turned slowly around and, and shot through with power and light before he is slowly lowered to the ground again, changed back into the prince that he truly was. Now, when I think of Pentecost, I admit that this is the picture that comes to mind. I imagine the Holy Spirit whirling around the disciples, sparks and lightning coming from their fingertips and the disciples feeling like they've been lifted up and twirled around. And then it's all over and they discover that they have most definitely been changed. Now in the passage that we heard, they rushed outside and started speaking in lots of different languages. Jerusalem, the city, was filled with believers from all over the world. And the disciples were suddenly speaking in all those languages. And Peter, who only a short time before had denied the Lord three times in fear for his life, now stands boldly before the very crowds he's been hiding from and speaks to them with eloquence and authority of God's mighty work in fulfilling the promises he spoke through the prophet Joel of the coming of God's own spirit upon the people and the sharing of the gospel message of hope, and freedom and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. God has given us the Holy Spirit. The present is unwrapped. It is there for us in full so that we are equipped to do the work of telling the whole world the good news about Jesus. Because that's what this birthday is all about. The start of the mission to share the gospel with those who do not yet know him, to bring others into the family of God. And the disciples weren't frightened anymore. They wanted to know people to know about Jesus, and they couldn't wait to start. What about today? More than 2,000 years after Pentecost, what does the coming of the Holy Spirit mean for us? Well, just like those first followers of Jesus, we are changed when we ask him to come into our lives and help us to live as he wants us to. He gives us the Holy Spirit to guide and encourage us, and we are changed. We probably won't start speaking in other languages, and we may not at first know how things are different. Things in our lives will still almost inevitably be difficult from time to time. 
And things will come along that frighten us or, or tempt us to wander away from the path that our feet have been set on. But you will be amazed to discover that whenever these sorts of situations come along, you find you are thinking of them differently, wanting to do the right thing, wanting to hold tight to the God who has promised to be with us forever, wanting to ask for his help. And that's the Holy Spirit's work in you. So as we celebrate the church's birthday this Sunday, let's remember to thank God for all the good gifts he has given us and ask him to help us use those gifts to be like the first followers of Jesus, rushing out to tell the whole world about what he has done for us. I don't usually pray at the end of our midweek meditation, but I'd like to today. So let's pray. Father God, generous Lord, thank you for loving us and saving us through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for drawing us to yourself by the power of your spirit and the gift of that same spirit who has made his dwelling within us. Lord, we know the spirit gives life to your people and makes us one. As we approach Pentecost, we thank you for the church and for making us a part of it. Help us to be like those first Christians, one in purpose and mind, excited about Jesus and wanting to tell everyone we know. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Reignite our hearts with love for God now and forever. Amen.